Have you played Fallout New Vegas so much that everything feels trivial? Are you looking to make your experience in Sandland forgiving? Look no further than Fallout Dust. Set 20 years after the events of Fallout New Vegas, you take on the life of a survivor trying to escape what remains of the Mojave. A large storm completely envelops much of the land resembling the Divide. Tunnelers have escaped and now travel in massive packs. The NCR has all but left the Mojave. The Legion have resorted to cannibalism, and the Strip has been overtaken by a variant of the Cloud from Dead Money. With just a few of the many changes covered, get on your thigh highs as we explore all four different endings of Dust and master what remains of the Mojave. Before we start surviving, we need to make our character. This is Safar, an everyday businessman. For my special stats, I want the maxed out strength, endurance, and luck, while leaving intelligence at 7. Perception, charisma, and agility acted as my dump stats. In Dust, perception is useless outside of a few select perks, and charisma is even more useless without companions. Agility at 1 is controversial, but just know that backpacks and radiation poisoning would reduce it to 1 regardless. For my skills, I ended up going with guns, melee weapons, and survival. For the traits this time, I only chose skilled as we learned in one of our previous runs that Logan's loophole is maxed out at level 10 instead of level 30 as it is in the base game. With our character created, I get rid of any DLC items to make this experience as painful as possible. I ended up choosing Caesar's Legion Safe House as my start and began taking stock of what I had for the long journey ahead. We start off with two bullets and the item condition is literally non-existent. I wish I could just take up some of these intestines and just wrap it around my neck real quick, but I don't think I can. Crafting kit is huge in dust. I don't really know how to use it very well, but it is one of the best ways to recycle your limbs. I plan on just playing dust and enjoying it a little bit. I know that's uh, really not going to happen, but we'll give it a shot. You know, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. If I go along this railroad, there should be a couple survivors that I'm hoping to one shot with my pistol and be able to get a couple more rounds. Sometimes there are tunnelers. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna just casually walk right over here. Yeah, see how quickly they just died? Both of those fuckers died immediately. All right, I'm hoping the Legion has them now. We just gotta be quicker than that, you know what I mean? After going back for the second body and collecting the rest of the supplies, I narrowly escape before running into town. The tunnelers, if I go down to that town, they're gonna be able to see me. There is also marked men inside of this place. I don't know if you can kind of see him there, just standing menacingly. Wanting to gather some supplies from the various townhouses, I step inside one of the buildings and pick up a huge backpack. This thing adds 50 pounds of carrying capacity, which is crucial in dust given how little you can carry. Eventually getting outside and killing a tribal, I contemplate running into the dust, leaving Nipton behind me, but I get greedy and decide to go back to see what remains of the tribals after the tunnelers. Uh, we can take this scythe, right? And we can go in here to our aid, go to crafting kit. We're going to break that down, right? And with the crutch, uh, we can end up making a splint, right? That crutch and that leather belt restores limb condition. It sucks. Like, the amount of limb condition that it restores is terrible, but it's very nice. Stocking up on a few supplies while in the cover of a building. I begin making my way outside of Nipton to leave the ground moistened by blood behind me. I end up finding myself running past Prem to get to Good Springs, all the while running for my life from tunnelers. I want to see if Barton Thorne's stash is still here. Could you imagine? Jesus, one shot. One shot. Why is it another shot in my balls, though? I don't know what I just got, but I got it. Was it worth it? That's almost 30 rounds. That's peak. Good Springs is not safe, unfortunately. I, As much as I wish to be just encapsulated by Sunny Smile's breast tissue, I don't think that that's going to happen. Good Springs itself is overrun with a plague, and all that remains are feral dogs, with some even taking up shelter inside of what remains of the buildings. Here I am sure to do as much looting as possible while trying to keep my weight at a reasonable amount. As is tradition, I also drink out of the toilet so that those of the piss kink are properly represented. I like eating some dog meat. Hey, yo. So what I want you to do is firmly grab the shaft of your shovel with two hands, okay? I'm going to teach you how to dig. Spray, even if you've got something too small, you still need to grab it with two hands. It'll make the other person feel so much better about themselves. Finding myself in the Good Springs General Store, I'm sure to pick up the 22 pistol, as well as the numerous radiation supplies next to a pile of bodies. Heading outside and into one of the nearby houses, I find an ultimate stash of 100 rounds for the 22 pistol. It's not decided whether these rounds are intentional from the mod author or if they are a bug, 
but regardless, they proved to be a lifesaver multiple times throughout the start of this run. And Doc Mitchell's place I think is locked, if I remember correctly. But there is also a uh, back door that we'll uh, consider peeking our head into. Stock up on some healing supplies, again with those crutches, they do weigh a lot, but we can break them down. So I mentioned uh, a little while ago about this whole chemistry set. We don't want stem packs, right? We're good with healing. What we want is drugs. I really want to just fuck this pot in particular. That little handle there, give it a shot, right? It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Pansexual POV. <laughs> nice. See, that's how you kill a dog. Oh, hey, doggy. Now, watch me as I kill three dogs. Three dog? Is that a Fallout 3 reference? <sighs> Owl lets out a little whimper as he steps into the house. Listen, hear me out, okay? Y'all think you can just go get your posse and fuck me up like that? <laughs> well, you absolutely can. All right, so listen, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, so we're just gonna completely forget about that. Just walk over here pretty casually. Sometimes you just have to try a toothbrush in your ass, and that's what I'm doing right now. While in Good Springs, things certainly get a little bit complicated, but overall, the experience with the dogs were pretty easy, despite only being level one. A hunter even appeared randomly, but they stood no match for my massive shovel. Heading over to the graveyard where the courier was buried over 20 years ago, I take care of the only person that remains in Good Springs. Nice. Alleviated, I would wear your face if I could. There's so much feet here. That's six feet. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is just death over and over again. Nice. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to dump all my points in survival. So, in Dust, it completely overhauls all of the skills. Everything is different, and everything has a lot like traits, and the fact that it has one positive and one negative. A lot of these perks in Dust are unfortunately broken, um, so we'll have to keep that in mind as well. But we'll just do the best we can and see what we got here to start with. So I believe we might actually have a perk already that I want, and it's called Super Slam. And the reason why that one's so nice is because it actually allows us to stagger enemies indefinitely with melee. Oh my lord, a Marksman Carbine. Dude, we are about to fuck so much shit up. Armed with a Marksman Carbine, I proved just how effective Steady can be. This weapon is by far what carries us for the rest of the game, but ammunition will always be an issue if we can't find some sustainable source of it. After giving the soldiers' knobs a good polish, I collect all of their gear before dropping off anything that I didn't want and making my way to Prim. Alleviated, you can't just take my urethra away from me, okay? And who says that they're mine, right? They very well could be somebody else's urethra. So this is one of the other starting locations that you can get. Me just blind firing. I just look over at chat and all I see is bird genitalia and I'm like, you know, these really are my people. Okay, we'll try to fight a tunneler. We'll see how it goes. Now, if there's a pack of them, I might just cry. Oh, god damn, look at that ass. I think I one-shot that guy. At least 10 inches. I think 10 inches is, is being pretty decent. Let's go ahead and head our way over to Prim. Dude, what weapon does this guy have? Nice. A makeshift laser repeater. I think it broke. Actually, that looks really sick. Super slam, don't fail me now. Okay, there is only one. That makes my life easier. Oh, crap. Uh, see that limb breaking? I don't like that. Dude, we're fucked. Just throwing it out there. I just want to see, like, how many really show up. Why am I still alive right now? Come on. Dude, that guy missed. Clutch. Why is this actually worked? Okay, there we go. Alright, let's go ahead and get the survival high enough so we can grab Radchild. Go back and pump that all the way down because we don't need it anymore. And let's go ahead and grab more repair. Rushing water might have been a little bit overkill, but it was fun. Nice stagger. Oh, dude's got a one-shot rifle. <laughs> dude, we were doing so good. Oh. 
Don't do it. Ugh. Okay. I... I don't feel like that worked as well as what I had really hoped. Oh, dude, there was one more guy. Okay, Assault Carbine, definitely the way to go. There is absolutely nothing I need behind these vibrators. I am definitely wasting supplies here. Demonetized. While the Bison Steve certainly wasn't a piece of cake, the Vicky and Vance Casino proved to be even worse. I died so many times in here because of how many enemies are just standing waiting at the door, but eventually somebody had a bright idea that changed how I played forever. You could try using the slot machine as cover. I could, you're right. <laughs> when somebody actually thinks, and then I do what they say. And then I'm like, wow, that worked. Wanting to see what remains at the Mojave Outpost, I start leaving the town that I slaughtered. Wow, that damage. Fucking impeccable. Okay. Alright. He's so fast and he does so much damage. And that's dust for you. That's, that's the whole just of dust. Dude, did you see that? Those bottle cat. It was Malcolm Holmes. Yeah, we're gonna go with Ghost Hunter. I literally, I know we literally have not come across any ghosts, but trust me, it is one of the best perks. Head game is on point, Lightning. It always is. You know it is. After getting humbled by Malcolm Holmes himself, I decided to head back to Prem to find more ammo. Here, I found I didn't do as good of a job as what I thought with clearing out this town, as there were many cannibals still inside of the numerous buildings. I even headed over to what used to be Mojave Express's main office. But unfortunately, Eddie was no longer on the table. That being said, my morale was boosted when I was able to fend off multiple foes at once with the help of Super Slam. What the hell kind of weapon is that? That's kind of hot. Dude is messing me up too. Oh, I'm concussed. <laughs> I slid dude into the, uh, the back rooms. A claw hammer? Oh, that's what the claw hammers are. When it said claw hammer earlier, I was thinking of like a hammer, like a claw hammer. I myself like to sleep with three balls. And since I have two, I will take one of these balls into the bed with me. I cannot sleep while trespassing. Hey, go fuck yourself. Once I finished up a few more foes, I began heading south where I got to the Nevada Highway Patrol Station. Damn. Oh, I don't think he was hostile. Dude, what is happening right now? Don't shoot me. Deciding to take a moment and rest up, I claim one of the cots as my own and drink some toilet water before appreciating my dashing good looks. A little further south, I dealt with multiple rat scorpions before finally getting to what I had hoped to be a safe haven. Nice dodge. <laughs> Imagine just full force like hitting somebody with a shovel and they don't move. That's just way too good in dust. I'm just gonna get out of here. 95% chance and I got that 5%. You know me, for real, for real. Rad child will save you. Dude, the perks that I have right now are so good. All right, we're gonna say go with Stonewall just because of how much melee I've been doing. Um, and not being able to be knocked down in combat is gonna be absolutely crucial against any tunnelers that we come across. So Stonewall it is. Heading east on the road to Nipton, I fight multiple giant ants before finally meeting my match in accuracy. And that is my playthrough of Dust. <laughs> Look at that head roll. Listen, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> He's fucking consistent. Fat mine? Okay, actually, maybe that one would be good. I was gonna say, if grenades were actually good, maybe I'd give this a shot, but... I don't know why, that guy is just not wanting to die. That's right, it's work your little ass for me. <laughs> Directional owl talking to miners. <laughs> Although I may have already lost my sanity, we were actually making pretty decent progress. 
I spent quite a lot of time clearing out what remained of Nipton, and even visiting the town hall, finding a notable stash of turbo. What used to be Legion mongrels were now supposedly owned by tribals, but they still proved no match for my bumper sword. I even got some use out of a plasma pistol when a tribal got the jump on me. After grabbing what little loot I could, I hit the road again to a deadly portion of the map. I am so dead. Like, why even try anymore, you know? Just take me now. Alright, I'm gonna get up on these rocks as fast as possible, I think. Oh, fuck. Oh my god! Um, I pretty well come whenever I want. I really don't hold back at all. I can't even see. Did I shoot her when I couldn't even see? Alright, come on. I am a crit build. I will crit. I need you to crit. That was awful. This is so not worth it, but the experience is so nice. Where are you? Okay. I, I, I mean, I, listen. I'm not complaining. I'm gonna kill this guy. There's gonna be like four more right behind me. Mangled head? Two of them. Okay. I. What did I say? Deciding after all that the experience wasn't quite worth it, I headed north, where I met some more tribals. Wait. Are they just friendly? Are you guys chill? You wanna be friends? I'll lick your nipples, I promise. Jesus. Deathfall gauntlet? Question mark? My body is so broken. What do you need? I've been on these roads for 37 years. My pussy is weak, and I have no time for a man like you. Later. I gotta say, in terms of places that I could be stuck in, this one's pretty good. <gasps> Dies immediately. Alright, how many times can I die here? <laughs> I'm not even trying at this point. This is so much fun. God damn. My ass just, like, exploded. Um... Did you all just see how many fucking throwing spears were thrown at me and all missed? I survived that. I don't think I hit a single one of those shots. Somebody's gonna be gone for five minutes. Go make popcorn or something, but they're still gonna come back to this. No. No way, she's gonna spear me. Okay, we're good. Now I'm gonna run away, like a little bitch. One more, one more, one more. Okay, was that worth it? A Mexican hunting rifle. Dude, if that would've had a hunting rifle scope, I would've shit myself. Does it have the flag on the stock? It's honestly... Yeah. Yeah, it does. Nice. I don't know that I've ever enjoyed dying that much. <laughs> if I could get that height... Oh. Oh my god, dude. I just... I just came all down my leg. Why? <laughs> Why am I throwing... <laughs> it killed somebody. I threw it horizontal. And it killed somebody. <laughs> Novak in Dust is completely overrun by cannibals, but we're sure to make short work of them with a combination of throwing spears and the new rifle that we picked up. You boon your last boon boon. See, like, this guy? Like, there's fucking five of them in here. Like, how do you... How do you do... Six of them in here. Seven, eight. Eight of them in there. Eight people. Like, what the fuck do you do with that? Had enough. Come on. Why did that actually work? After clearing out most of Novak, I continued heading north, where I met back up with Oledy Gibson before getting to what remains of Helios 1. Oh. See, and you'd hope that, like, Helios 1 would be, like, the last bastion of the NCR or something like that. Like, they would really try to hold that to the very end, but... No, no, they're just... they're fucking dead. Everybody's dead.
detected. After finishing up at Helios 1 and murdering highway bandits, I take a look at my map to get a heading on an interesting location. Doing a little bit of camping, I end up at the gates of Nellis, only for me to realize that I needed a key to get past. Heading south after being disappointed, I take out my raid on the survivors inside of the Crimson Caravan Company. I freaking love people just walking in here and dying. Uh -huh. Oh shit, got two ticks to help. Nice. I love that they're so synchronized. Over here. I deserve that. <laughs> Fucking love New Vegas. <laughs> Jeez, talk about overkill. Alright, listen. They make Brahmin sounds. That it's fucking adorable and they have Brahmin meat on them. People, I can talk to them. What do you need? I can make out. I can buy goods. Or not. Bye. Upon trying to enter in Freeside, the entire location was full of ghouls and radiation, leaving me to contemplate other options. I decided to eat some strange meat that allowed me to get insane, where I was dubbed the Arthur of Camelot. Becoming insane in dust is useful for a few reasons, most notably access to a form of transportation through hallucinations, as well as several perks that provide much quality of life. Needing my rads removed and access to water, I hid it in the sewers in hopes of making it out alive. I've covered the sewers multiple times here on the channel, but something about it sticks with me. The level of persistence that's required the lack of supplies, or the grim atmosphere. Either way, each and every time that I remove the grate to get inside, the aftermath is a bloodshed. Like, how quickly will I die? That's how quick. <laughs> so, I need to avoid the water at all costs. I can't even go in the fucking tube. You know what? Maybe I'm thirsty. I can't drink the water, though. <laughs> I don't have any water, and I can't drink water. Dude, and this room is full of radiation. Yeah, we, uh, we might be fucked. I'm gonna run out of ammo. There's four guys. I've only got three bullets. Yeah, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. We just gotta get some water. So the whole point of the sewers is as soon as you get down here, you can't go back up without the key. I think what I could try to do is pop an experimental rad, drink the water, even if it's just a little bit. Give me that fucking experience. Okay. We leveled up. Fucking go. No! That means I'm gonna have to redo all that again. But I need to know if I can survive drinking water. That is enough. That is enough. Because that gets my H2O down that much. Irradiated beauty. Perfect. Fucking golden. We're gonna sleep once. Sleep again. Our rads have stopped blinking. We'll get down to that level. And we can drink as much irradiated water as we want. This is where the sewer key is. The sewer master key is specifically what you want. Okay, I just need to remember how to get to that other section though. I think where we need to go is here. What a journey. 
we are back to the surface after that much time. But uh, we immediately have to run into the hotel. That way we don't die. Oh, Vegas. Something about that. A little bit of knee jerk in action there. Um, listen. New Vegas is beautiful the way that it is. <laughs> You're not even sleeping in a place with a door. You don't have anything in lock. Like, what is this? The apocalypse? Uh, we're gonna start with the marksman carbine just because I don't know how bad this is gonna be. It's I'm over to die. I'm gonna tell you that much right now. Well, that happened much sooner than I expected. Nice. Now, as long as nobody else picks up this gun, I think we're gonna be okay. And this axe, I want to keep this axe for as long as possible. We're gonna get jury rigging this level, which means we do get to keep this axe. A lot of people are gonna be like, okay, well we're done in here, right? Like just leave. Uh, and there are a couple of like bear traps by the door, so if you come in, you're gonna be immediately crippled. But there's this little door right over here behind the hotel that uh, we uh, just kind of survived in a little bit. We can go through here, and this will get us to Freeside. Once inside of Freeside, from a different angle than what we came in from before, I try to take down a few ghouls before realizing that my rads are too high. Heading back to the hotel for some sleep, I continue taking them down before getting deeper into the cloud. On Freeside and in the strip itself, there is the, the cloud. We get poisoned by it which isn't that big of a deal because we have Radchild and that counteracts that. So it's a little bit of a catch-22. Do we want the additional healing or do we want uh, to not immediately be one-shot by ghouls? I wish that they would just start stripping, but I don't think that that's going to happen. Oh, we better be careful with this guy. He might have some bombs. Oh, okay. <laughs> not sure what's going on. Y'all are like in the ground. What the hell are you doing? Bro just, what did he just pull out? A lever action shotgun on me? That went over so much better than what I thought it was going to. A little bit of stash of ammo here. Can you guys remember where that blue thing was at? I want to say it was near Mormon Fort, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's it right there. Oh, okay. Dude just orgasmed on me and hurt me. Sending any and all supplies I didn't need to Novak, I stock up on some Tula water before dealing with the ghouls inside of what used to be the King's School of Impersonation. Here I was able to take a certain level of refuge in the crummy looking beds, as well as occasionally popping my head out to deal with the many feral ghouls. With Big Boomer at my side, I was able to keep any hallucinations at bay, allowing me to level up to level 9 and finally obtain jury rigging. I would just eat that cannibal. You know what? Fuck it, I will eat that cannibal. Now I wonder, makeshift scythe, please tell me. Please. 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 Just let me... I just busted again. How many times? At least four. I don't even think we can get on the strip this way, just to throw that out there. I really probably should have left one of the hallucinations. But I didn't. There's the hallucination. What just happened is we just got hit by a uh, big ghosty ghosty, right? We need to get to the strip. That's what I want. Our food is awful, but we can sleep to reduce our rads. So we're in a good spot. But this takes us to Gamora. Gamora is on the strip. Is that a shotgun? Why a shotgun? So I'm thinking we try to pop out here, clear it out, and then there's got to be some bed out there that I can sleep in. Honestly, I think even if I could sleep, I really probably shouldn't. I need food. That's just the way that it is. <laughs> Bro's half on the table and making threats. Alright, so there is the way out, but that way out, I don't know that it- I think, I think we're still trapped on this side of the strip. I don't think we can get inside the labs yet. Uh, I think that this is locked, but I think I know where the key is at not wait in this location. I think that that is true for the entirety of Gamora. I don't know that you can sleep anywhere. There's got there's got to be some place you can sleep in here, right? Like even on the upper levels. Ow, literally everything's crippled. I will eat shit. I forgot Nero was in here. 
Oh my fucking god. Somebody overkilled my ass. See how crazy that is? I, why did I fly? Oh my god, no way. No way. No way. No. Maybe I can just stun him. Can I not stun this guy? Why can I not stun this guy? Okay, I want that. Give me that. Bend down while I shove my absolute badonk donk bumper sword into your. Damn, there goes a big earner. <laughs> what did he just say? Um, that was brutal. There's gotta be some food in here. Dude was, dude was fighting for his life. This is what we needed this like entire time. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat all of this right now because we're that hungry. Oh, fucking rads. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I wanna cry. I can't even eat food. I can't sleep, so I can't eat food. I don't think that there's anywhere to sleep in here. Genuinely, I think I think that's the whole fucking point. Like, deciding to sneak into the Gamora cash room, I make my way into the connection to the tops. This allows me to die a horrible death from radiation poisoning, further making me realize my need for sleep. I ended up going back to the casino for a third time, looking for any source of a reliable bed, but it wasn't until I stepped out in the courtyard that I was able to find one with the help of Chad. Is there any actual bed here? Surely to God, right? Go back. Why do you keep saying go back? You just passed one? Oh my fucking god. Now we're gonna go back through. We're not gonna YOLO it. We're gonna take it seriously because we don't have one life. We have- we have many, right? Alright, so what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted is there are a bunch of explosives in here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run past them all- no, I'm just fucking with you. We're gonna try, though, to not YOLO up. I don't know where they're at, honestly, but I don't- I don't really care. We are- we are alive. We've got our fire axe with full condition. We're about to fuck up some ghouls. Uh, bro just took psychic damage, I think. <laughs> After putting my 10 millimeter to good use, I grab Jacob's stash at the bottom of the elevator and take the hatch to Vault 21. Unfortunately, the constant radiation kills me yet again, forcing me to explode my way back to Gamora to get a good night's rest. Eventually getting through Vault 21 and killing a few cloud victims, I pick up a super efficient radiation suit. Drinking a little bit more toilet water, I face off against the cloud victims inside what used to be Michelangelo's place. That little cocksucker, that's a good bait. Uh, I love the water fountains in this. You guys hear that? Just getting progressively louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. Oh uh, yeah, just like that baby. You know last time guys that we came across somebody with throwing spears and we just sat there for like five minutes? You wanna do that again? Would that be fun? You guys not contributing. Bunch of stuff in here that we really need. Monorail station key, there's one key. There should be another key here that we need. Military storage key, we need that one. Nellis gate key, another key that we need. We're gonna go across the road and check out the storage place as well. Light machine gun? I don't know what ammo that takes. I'm just gonna pick up everything, I guess. That gun, that's where that is, okay. Anti-material rifle? Let's fucking go. We are getting all of the shit for all of the endings. This is so good. I like this. I do. And the reason why is 50% faster with melee is absolutely insane, and that's worth it.
You guys want to see the ending? One of the endings? I think I think we should do that. The dead money ending is a bitch, but it's not as difficult as what some of the other ones are, and you get a bunch of XP for doing it. So it's one of the few ways that you can gain uh, quest-related experience and dust. So if you were not an enemy of the uh, the NCR, you could trade with this guy. But because we killed the NCR, we can't do anything with this guy. If you can ensure that this guy survives, you can trade with him. And look at this. And we've got 1600 caps. So guys, we've got ammo. Shoot something, a giant explosion happens. <laughs> Actually being able to shoot things with ammo is insane. Uh, this is the easiest ending, in my opinion, to do, even though it's still kind of a bitch. So you get this option here. You step up to the vertebrate. Although you are no pilot, you are confident that the autopilot will guide you to safely away from this hell. You've made it, but at what cost? You reflect on the evils you committed. Was it worth it? Are you deserving of this rescue? Perhaps this ride was meant for another. Perhaps your journey was destined to end another way. If you board the vertebrate, I'll show you what happens. You end up in dead money. Now, before you get your hopes up and say, oh my god, that's fucking amazing, uh, it actually really sucks because dead money is largely locked off. And once you're here, you obviously can't go back to the Mojave. There's no way that I know of, anyhow, to go back. So here is Father Elijah. This is what he ends up. And all the other sections of dead money are, like, blocked off. So, like, actually getting to the casino, to my knowledge, is not possible. By going into the sewers below, you end up in this place. So you, uh, you wander down here for about five minutes or so, and you take the ladder to safety. So you get to this camp, you know, this is, this is where you came from, it looks very festive, right? You're like, okay, cool, what's, what's here? And then you're just immediately greeted by a bright light, and like, that's the end of the game. So like, that's, that's all that the ending is. I respect it creatively, I think that there's, there's interesting parts of it, but that's not how we're gonna end our playthrough of Dust. Uh, so we can safely say that we've completed that ending, but we are going to load back here. So we go back up, and then you're like, okay, well, what is he doing? He's just going to go back to the same thing again. But if you if you back away from the vertebrate, you get a shit ton of experience for rejecting one of the endings. So we can get a free level up out of the deal once we uh, get safe. <laughs> it's actually eerily quiet over here. Jesus. Dropping off anything that I don't need and sending it off to Novak, I walk through the dark fog to get to the Ultralux, where I find some interesting lore. So there are, there are these spitty thingies in the center of the room. We're just gonna... We're just gonna kind of avoid them, I think. Uh, this is where the key is at. Before you walk through that door, I warn you, there is very little chance that I am still sane, if I'm alive at all. So with that key that we picked off that skeleton, we can go in here and avoid the 500 billion traps. Okay, we're done. <laughs> so that was the Ultralux. So this is the uh, the, the forecaster. Um, this is the, the little kid that you meet underneath the bridge at the 308. 188, thank, thank you, Spray. <laughs> Do we know how Deathclaws actually reproduce? <laughs> Why are we bringing this up? All right, so I think we've uh, pretty well cleared out the Ultralux. There isn't really too much going on in here. But I think it's really cool that they were able to spend that much time on just one character and just kind of converted this whole place to be dedicated to it. That's why you gotta watch out for traps. Stumbling my way back through the tops in Gamora, I take down everyone who responds before finally checking out the Lucky 38. We're gonna go across here, and uh, because we have the red suit, we're not gonna really be bothered a whole lot by the radiation. Uh, but because we picked up that experimental card, we can use the key to get inside of the Lucky 38. And there are just a bunch of centaurs in here that we're not going to waste our bullets on. Killing the centaurs and checking out one of the other ways out of the sewers if the player has enough lockpick, I continue exploring the abandoned laboratory. Don't the golden boxing gloves normally sit right there? I want to say that they do, but... 
So I don't think you can actually get to like Mr. House's area in general, because I, I think all this is like boarded off. So yeah, this is this is just inaccessible. So it kind of sucks that you can't really explore. After finishing up inside, I head back out into the fog and return to Freeside, where I meet back up with the hallucination. I'll just let this guy hit me. Alright, so one of the features of being insane is that you end up going to this this room, right? And we kind of messed around with this a little bit last time, that this is how we actually got into the Gamora Suites to begin with. But if you use the system right, it almost kind of acts as a fast travel system. So no normally in Dust you can't fast travel at all. One of the mods that I have uh, enables that in case we need that as kind of like a backup deal. There's just this, this really odd room, right? Like everything's upside down, but there are these like seven doors. Heading into the door labeled Fisherman's Pride, I head back out to the Mojave to find the location of the courier. I think we're gonna stay here because I think we're definitely more than ready to fight the courier. Here lies a killer, here lies a savior, here lies a courier. Oh my fucking god, did you guys see how quick that was? <laughs> Come on there, little buddy. Poke your head out. Or not. <laughs> Bro has an automatic anti-material rival. Okay, there we go. Jesus. <laughs> Alright, so there's a bunch of Securitrons around here, as well as, of course, the courier themselves. Grabbing more supplies than what I can carry, I make the decision to head back to Novak before ultimately stopping at Boulder City along the way. I'm probably never going to use the 50, but uh, if I use it against these guys, just like hypothetically, right? So I'll show you that maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. We'll see. All right. So that's like, I don't know, three rounds straight to the face and I'm out of bullets. I would never practically carry that gun. Painstakingly killing a few more ghost trappers for the experience, I find what remains of the king and read his final words. Well, boys, this is it. You can protest all you want, but I'm telling you, I'm a dead man. This won't, won't heal itself. No, thank you. Thank you for all the you've done in my service. You've served Freeside well. Heck, you even ended up serving the strip well. Who would have thought? Thanks again, boys, and keep the music of a man live. Why can't I have a weapon vendor that sells these rounds? Spending a little bit of time getting my gear in order inside one of the houses of Novak, I stock up on some toilet water before continuing my journey south towards the ending for Old World Blues. She's kind of complicated. Um, what is going on with her? That's a lot of tunnelers. Alright, we're going to try two different tactics here. Jesus Christ. So much experience can be gotten from tunnelers, so it's really worth stopping and killing them. I don't want to set the world on fire. I'm not sure why the uh, the gun and dust has broken the flare gun, but you can fire it indefinitely. There's no reloading at all. Visiting Cottonwood Cove at the request of chat, I admire the genitals of a human cattle before putting some throwing spears to good use. I also really dislike the fact that you can't pick up <laughs> any of the throwing spears after you use them. I guess it kind of makes sense like if they break or whatever, but I feel like you should still be able to pick up a couple of them. What a throw. I kind of wonder if my quick loot system will have an issue with Cannibal, but it doesn't really look like it so far. This game, you see that delicious water right behind you? Like, behind this guy? Looks absolutely fantastic, right? You want some of it, don't you? You want a little bit of it? Why is there actually water here? What? The last time I played Dust, there was no water. Maybe I installed something wrong last time, or I, uh... I don't feel like this should be clean water. 
Finishing up at Cottonwood Cove, I pushed through Searchlight before killing a few more survivors on the way back to the Legion safe house. Um, I hope they all just stand there. They killed him. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Jesus, this gun. So the reason why we're going to go back in here is because there's a little thing on our here that connects to a tunnel that we're going to go through. And there is a guy over here. Do you want to use the C4? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so this leads us to Old World Blues. Despite having done multiple runs relating to Big Mountain, I'm still wildly unfamiliar with its landscape. Unfortunately, it seems like many of the areas that I am familiar with are locked off in dust, leaving me wondering close to the massive dome. As I explore the world covered by water, I learn that scavengers and night stalkers make this place their home. Fortunately, I'm able to show them who's daddy and pretend like I'm Walter White in the process. Getting closer to the think tank sees me fighting multiple Brotherhood of Steel, and unfortunately, I learn that my bullets don't do very well against their thick armor. Maybe we should have gotten AP rounds. <laughs> this guy slides really well. I'm glad that he walked all the way over here just to get beat the fuck up. Can you not? Yeah, I don't know that we got this in the bag. If this is locked, I'm going to be so pissed. Listen, I can't even be mad with that one. That one was that one was good. I would love to disarm all those, but really got to have some sort of an explosive. If it's just inaccessible, why even have this door here? Why even have the traps? I just I just don't get it. I want to say it's that one. <laughs> I, I had to do it once. Can I just... Oh, fuck you, game. You know what? Just... Alright, I tried to go about this strategically, but... Brute first is always the answer. <laughs> I literally walked straight into it. After using the transponder once getting outside, I wait until the day before climbing down a massive cliff face. This ultimately takes me to safety, where I'm once again blinded by light. Deciding that I wanted to keep the transponder as a memento of sorts, I swam across the water before fighting more scavengers. After a massive firefight, I grabbed Christine's rifle before once again swimming across the water to get closer to the exit. Along the way, I came across several Cazadors and was surprisingly able to hold my own, allowing me to level up to level 13. At this point, I was really hoping to obtain Packrat, but unfortunately it was just outside of my reach as I only had 4 intelligence as opposed to the required 5. Accepting that I would have to waste a level on intense training for intelligence, I headed back to the tunnel and ultimately returned to the Mojave. After resting up a little bit, I deal with a few tunnelers and try out my new rifle. I think those are literally two of the exact same people. I think this might be my new favorite weapon. I haven't used it in such a long time. Oh, we definitely keep this rifle. That utility is insane. This is so much ammo, and we don't even have Scrounger. After getting back to Novak, I decided to rest up and store anything that I didn't want weighing me down for the journey ahead. I want to get to Camp McCarran, so we're going to stop there first, and then I think I'm going to just go straight to Nellis. Uh-oh. We got a hit squad on us. Never mind. Don't care. You've got two more days to deal with your bad <laughs> NCR reputation. I love that this is still in the game. Make them happy, or we'll make you dead. 
think there's one more over there. That really looks like a face to me. So this place is, is completely overrun by a crap ton of NCR. I don't know that we've got that in the bag. There's one in the tower. Oh, that's right, we got Cannibal. I usually devour men in a different capacity. Look at how quickly I almost just died. Like, I, I ate it big. I'm gonna see if I can hide behind this pillar. Oh my god, dude. No way. I might die here. Nope, we stayed alive. I am so glad we went to Old World Luge just for this. Because this weapon is so much nicer. We're in a really bad spot here. We've got no elevation whatsoever. We do not know what's around the corner. I like this guy, for example. Uh, Gene Skydiving is probably the best spot to spawn in, uh, but this time around we went with Caesar's Legion. Safe house. I think we've got enough ammo to clear it because we're getting like five or six rounds from each of these guys and we're only using one. anti material rifle. I just, I love the animation for this. Like you guys, you guys have to appreciate this. I just fucking whip that shit out of like between my legs. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. We got another one to our right. Oh my god. Okay, this is more than what I was expecting. I'm gonna be real. But I think we're still gonna be okay. Nice. Kind of abusing bats there a little bit, but listen, it's dust, baby. I didn't even think it can shoot this far. Sure they got a can. <laughs> nice. Alright, that's it for the anti-material rifle. It was fun while it lasted. Dude was just standing there menacingly. Oh! I saw them peek and I was like, God, <laughs> I couldn't get over the tent fast enough. An automatic rifle is what she had. That HP. God damn. That damage is insane though. I like it though, because if I get to do that much damage, they should be able to do that much damage too. The only thing that's saving us right now is that those take a little bit to start up, otherwise we would be absolutely fucked. Hey, there's the Ranger Sequoia. Nice. Oh my god. That's a big ass tub. I would finally be able to take a tubby. Oh my lord. There's there's some food. There's a lot of food. We haven't even got to Vendertron yet. This has been such a big sidetrack. Alright, I think we're gonna get out of here, but we still have to uh, get to Vendertron. Don't send me any Night Stalker form, please. <laughs> I freaking love this all carbine. Just so many bullets in such a short period of time. Welcome, nice. Sir that would be so nice. Like if we actually had an anti-material rifle. But 44 rounds is not enough to justify. There's a very good chance we'll never see Vendertron again. Because he will probably die by tunnelers. Now, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, instead of being in his, like, little area over here, he's, he's near Vault 34. Alright, so now we need to get to Camp McCarran. I hate our reload speed with agility of one. That's absolutely insane. I guess that worked out okay. 
Hey, there's a laser pistol. I can finally repair the flare gun. There are a bunch of ghouls over here, so we're going to push real, real hard. Alright. We're back. Back in the sewers. Fucking A. This is not what I wanted. Yes, it is. Alright, so there is a ladder to the strip inside of the sewers. We just found it. And there's the monorail. We are absolutely killing it with this gun. We're going to be buying a lot of ammo. I'm, I'm just going to be real with y'all. We we need a, a lot. I wouldn't go all in on the sniper rifle. I, I think I'm going to go all in on the sniper rifle. <laughs> now, we do need to get back out. We should be able to just walk through the strip. After storing my stuff inside the monorail, I head back through the tops and Gamora. Anybody who's who's played Dust before and doesn't know about any of the passage ways that I'm taking, I am so sorry <laughs> because that is a life changer. Jesus, our rads. I'm, I'm gonna pop an experimental. <laughs> Don't go all in on the sniper, they said. It goes in all on the sniper. There are multiple. There sure are. One of them was young. Um, I did not realize that there were this many. <laughs> oh no. Could you imagine how bad that would have been, me trying to kill all those death claws in this condition where I can't see shit? <laughs> I was hoping to use AP rounds if I saw somebody in power armor, but I can't even tell if they're in power armor. Got a little bit sloppy there. I think I hit his gun. Why do I walk so fast? I have got a perk called the Scurrier, which increases my movement speed by 50%. And then I also have Travel Light, another perk that increases your movement speed by approximately 5%, if I recall correctly. Travel Light. It is 10%, not 5%, I apologize. I love how the gun just, like, hangs there in the air. I fucking love this rifle. I really, really, truly need to use it more. If you get it at Big Mountain in the base game, how the hell do you have it? I went to Big Mountain. Also, is this guy just... friendly? Yeah. Not without pearls. Oh. Sorry, dude. I love having so much ammo and dust. It's so much fun. We didn't get a key anywhere, so I don't think we can access the solar array, unfortunately. All right, I think we're done here. So let's see if we can uh, get back this way and go over here to the survivalist. I do not want to go to Vault 22. Lightning, do not make me go to Vault 22. That would be awful. I feel like it'd be, I don't know whether it would be just like a bunch of uh, tunnelers or like a bunch of spore carriers. <laughs> oh my God, guys. <laughs> Vault 22, Vault 22. Okay, all right, Vault 22 it is. It looks so moist. Love that. I want to say that this is where the survivalist rifle is at. I think that this is one of those buildings that it's a little bit larger on the outside than what it is inside. All right, there's the survivalist rifle. See, I wasn't lying to you guys. I really hope that this place is locked just so I can laugh in all of your guys' face. Oh, it says stay out. We shouldn't go in.
I guess I'd be okay with this place if it was just full vans. I feel like it's just going to be unchanged. All right, guys, we're going to be in Vault 22 for the next 40 minutes, just to let everybody know. Um, I'm going to be Royal Fuel. I'm, I'm just going to... If I don't start seeing any enemies soon, we're probably going to just leave, to be honest with you. There's probably nothing in here. I just, like, I can't fathom a reason why they would change anything in here. So much flamer fuel. Why is there so much? Mommy. Alright, we've got the Hepa cartridge filters. I don't know what more you could want from me. Oh my god. Yeah, just like that. Zoom in on that ass. This is why you shouldn't have gone to Vault 22. Listen, guys. It's your idea to come to Vault 22. Don't try to tell me otherwise. Oh my god, dude. So last day on Earth, huh? Getting your affairs in order? I really want to see if I can just kill them all. It looks like I can kill them all. What do you guys think? I hear a tunneler. Could you imagine how amazing it would be if they were all friendly? Dude, that would be so cool. I don't like how many shots that that took. I don't like that they're all running towards me. Let's do that. I think that would be a better play. I kind of want to just go inside. What do you guys think? Grab the snow globe, relax a little bit. Uh, Stonewall is working out pretty good right now. What is that fucking sound? I think I made an oopsie whoopsie. Yeah, this one was my idea. I totally accept full responsibility for this one. I didn't even see that fucker and he got me. All right, we're gonna go back out. Okay, we're gonna go back in. I just need to kill those fucking hallucinations. I can kill everybody in here, no problem. What the fuck hit me? There was, how many are in here? I want to say that that's it. I'm gonna throw down a quick save. Nuka Breaker. You guys think we should take that? Please have a toilet. Please have a toilet. You motherfuckers. I need H2O. <laughs> that snow globe bounced all the way over here. I love that. I feel like Bear Claw sounds like a drink, doesn't it? Dude, I don't fuck. I don't drink. I don't know. I am a virgin. Bear Claw sounds like the masculine version of... No fucking way. No way. Dude, I fucking hate everything about my life sometimes. It really isn't even that big of a deal, but I'm, I'm just upset already. Maybe they've got some water on them. Let's be optimistic. All right, we need, we need water desperately. There is a ranger tower over there. Maybe we'll be able to get water there. You guys are just saying random vaults at this point. You don't even care about my, my sanity. I'm so crippled right now that I'm probably going to miss most of these shots. Uh, Jesus Christ, dude. Absolutely insane. You sound like you're not having a good time. I am not having a good time right now, but that's that's what I signed myself up for. Alright. Water. I'm about to drink out of this toilet. You ready to water? Let's go! After finding enough water to survive on, I decide to reevaluate and start heading south to see what remains of the Great Cons. I do what I need to do to survive, including drinking out of toilets and engaging in intense firefights.
eventually getting to what remains of the armory and one of the starts that you can choose, I destroy what is left of the Great Cons and grab arguably the best perk of the entire run, Pack Rat. Talk about systematic destruction. We're gonna go outside of the strip because there is the hallucinations there, and then we're gonna find the one that takes us to the fort. Once we get to the fort, we're gonna clear out the fort. Once we're done with the fort, we'll take our shovel and go to Honest Hearts. After making up my mind, I head back through the sewers through the familiar route before getting to the monorail station and dumping off any gear that I don't need. It is here where I buy the last bit of ammo that would hold me over for the rest of the run. Should I run out of ammo in the middle of Lonesome Road, I would be left to a miserable fate. Stocking up on some more food, I return to Freeside, get hit by another hallucination to get sent to the back rooms, and enter what remains of the fort. Despite housing multiple guards, it seems as though the fort is empty like much of dust, leaving me slightly disappointed. Swimming my way back to Cottonwood Cove, I effortlessly murder any cannibals before making my last drop off at Novak and heading far to the north. Uh, ammo is very difficult to come by, but because of the way we've played, we're, uh, we're goaded with the sauce. And this is supposedly the best armor in Dust, but you can't equip it because there's no power armor training. That was a headshot. Come on now. Yeah, Dust is rough, but in a certain way, it's kind of fun. I think if you've mastered New Vegas, give it a shot. But if you haven't, give Vegas a couple more playthroughs before you ruin it with Dust. Talk about karma. Why is Owl going on a slaughter tour? You know what? Because I feel like it. That's why. Praise the almighty shovel, for he brings us the key. Alright, I have done pissed. I have done stretched. I have done come. So the entirety of Honest Hearts looks like this. Just a complete mass of green. Again, I recommend if you uh, if you haven't played this DLC before, play it first. Otherwise, you're going to be completely lost. And even if you have played it before, you're still going to be lost. So you still start in the same spot. It's just really fucking trippy. The walls speak true. The tall one. The branch fingers. He hunts. He finds. He kills. The walls speak true. The walls speak true. The walls speak true. <sighs> All right, there he is. We can't kill it, so we just gotta run. Far to the north, the NCR is camped out, but there isn't a lot that we can do because our visibility is non-existent. These guys are so scary. I really truly feel like they're scarier than Donalers. Not sure where all the green stuff is at. Or if rain just disrupts that and overrides the weather. Jesus, that reaction time was pretty decent. I appreciate her, like, grunting and saying, aha! Alright, so we're in White Bird's, White Bird's cave now. Now we need this key. Pine Creek Tunnel Key. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why would you ever want that to be auto? They killed him. That guy did a Mr. President. Whoa, whoa. Finally getting all of our weapons back up to good condition now, which is great. Ah. Ow. I barely survived that. Alright, I think I want to just get out of here. I know that this, there's the survivalist gear somewhere here, but quite honestly, I could give two shits about it. We got the key that we needed. I missed. I missed. <laughs> oh my god.
All right, Pine Creek Tunnel. So with the key that we, with the key that we got earlier, we were able to get through Zion, um, and probably the quickest way humanly possible. Just grabbing the key and fucking going. He seems slightly upset though that we left. This is Waking Cloud, the light at the end of the tunnel. We saw tents in the valley and campfires. We set out to meet them, but the people of the desert met us first. They shot Dancing Flame and he danced no longer. They shot Running Bear and he ran no longer. They shot Leads with Chalk, but he did not stop leading. He drew his war club and charged the enemy without fear in his eyes. They shot Dances with Come, but he came no longer. This door right here, we need to get through. It's sitting there laughing in your face, right there. Called Long Dark for a reason. And it would be even darker. Like, that's what you guys would be watching right now. Can you even see, like, anything? All you can see is the hut. You motherfucker. I must have disabled the, uh, <laughs> the toaster mine, but not the other mine. Dust is just hell. That's, that's really, that's really all, all dust is. How did that still kill me? Right now we're just heading to Vault 22. And ironically, we do pass through a vault here in a little bit. Here's the vault that you wanted so badly. Now, a lot of people, they're gonna walk straight through here. But here's what you need. Right here. Grand Staircase Key. So, there are two endings through Honest Hearts. One that we're gonna check out right now, but then there's another that is even worse. That doesn't involve you actually beating the game at all and just sends you through hell. So, we're gonna run back to where we were just a second ago at that door. All right, this right here is what we needed. Just that fucking key. That single key, we couldn't we couldn't shoot the lock on it, we couldn't do anything like that. It was just because we couldn't get inside of that door. And it just ends, okay? I didn't even get a look around at all. It just, it just fucking ended on me. I don't think I killed that, that thing. That thing killed me though. So we immediately just get ambushed right out of this door. I can't see anything right now. I am also not warmed up. One bit. There's my whole leg gone. Okay, what is what is going on right now? That's just how it's gonna look now. I hate my life. We're gonna grab the snow globe. That's what we'll do. Alright, so there's these things called dust walkers, right? We wanna kill those. We wanna kill all of them. <laughs> oh my god. I thought that was like an energy weapon that he had, but it's like an automatic gauss rifle or something. <laughs> Is that like a two-barrel pistol? 95% chance. This spot is definitely goaded for cover. I like to be like really close to the face of my enemies. That way I can watch their eyes roll to the back of their head. Makes me feel like I'm having intercourse. We're just gonna keep spamming bats and praying. <laughs> I do wanna cry. I wanna cry every three seconds. I don't know what just happened there. God. Why is my sway so bad? Like, my limb has to be broken. It wasn't just a second ago, though. Come on now. Now it is. <laughs> So that section, I believe, is blocked off, if I remember correctly, because I try to push up this way. So it's all all blocked off with rocks, so that means we have to push this way. Okay, just keep running, just keep running. Keep that. Are you kidding me? No way. So we've, we've got two death claws on our back. Oh no. Oh no.
<laughs> my Joshua Graham, look at my HP. We just are we just gonna engage in a wee bit of a scuffle? Oh no. That death call totally spawned anyway. Um looks it? <laughs> Ain't no way you can hit me up on top of the roof. Yeah, you know my nipples be puffy right now. Johnny, you might be right. Can I just like flare gun this guy through the wall? I sure did. Okay, that works for me. No. No. My agility is so bad. Thank god their weapons are awful. They are definitely above me. Get over there, please. Please, just hop over this thing. Hop over it. There you go, buddy. Thank you. Alright, you can, you can hit me if you want to. Oh my god. I need fucking cover. Run, 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 run. Where? <laughs> where? Where did that guy just come from? Ah yes, what do you want to use? The weapon without a scope? Or the weapon with the scope. Hmm. I don't know. You never know. What the fuck are these death claws on? Are they on crack and cocaine at the same time? Why does the flare gun do so much damage to them? Listen. <laughs> like how, like, all these guys are so sexually frustrated. Maybe it's just me, I'm not sure. I love their little dance dance. I just shot that person on the leg. Is that a child? That's gotta be a child, because I, <laughs> I hit that fucker in the head like at least three times. Are these all children? They're all children. Why did they all suddenly become children? They're like, nah fam, I'm just gonna become a child, that way I can be invincible. That's my answer in, in Fallout. That person was not a child. I just love how gracefully they fall in bad. Dodge. Dodge the flame, because we're just that hot. Nice. Kill him, please. Thank you. How many holes do you want for a fleshlight? Jesus. After clearing out what remains of the divide, I double check and make sure that the laser detonator is not accessible before heading to the Hopeville missile silo. It is here that I find out that it's locked, but fortunately a ladder allows us to return to the entrance of Lonesome Road. In the unmodded version of the game, Lonesome Road is a combat slog, and that much has not been changed. What has been changed is who was being murdered. While I collect the last few pieces of the puzzle that is dust, I would like to read you a story that has a sour taste to our success. The new watchers are young, reckless. They do not understand the why of our duties. 20 years ago, our people were weak. We followed blindly a false prophet with braided hair. He spoke to us of vengeance, vengeance against those who had betrayed us to the wind and the fire of the divide. He told us of a monster more terrible than any other. 
He told us of how this monster killed the Divide, killed Ashton, how he set a flame and laughed as it burned. But when the time came, when we saw this monster, we saw only a man. And within days, both were gone from this land, never to be seen again. They had killed each other with their hatred, no doubt. We were left with nothing but crumbling ruins to follow. Where would we go from there? We were lost. But then Junad came. Junad told us that our anger and pain was needless, that we still lived, and that life remained beautiful even in the Divide. He showed us that even in the harshest of places, life persists. One day he took me to an empty stretch of desert. I saw nothing but rocks and ruins for miles. He asked me which of God's creatures there I found the most beautiful. I was confused, as there were none but the two of us. Junad only smiled and lifted up a rock to see. Underneath lay a mother mole rat and her pups, asleep in their den. Twenty years ago, the gentlemen came through that mountain with painted faces and braided hair. They burned everything we had, but we survived. We fought back. The Divide was a harsh place in those early years at Ulysses. The Tunnelers, the Death Claws, and the Sandstorms. We tamed the Death Claws, ran off the Tunnelers, and covered our skin from the sands. But though we live, we still remember how it was in those early days. We still remember the struggle to survive. For that reason, we must be kind to those in the wasteland, those who need our help. We can and have raised them up to live among us. But we must remember also those who do not need our help, those who took our help and cast it into the dust. We must remember and never forget, for in the wastes always there shall be false prophets. Twenty years ago, the tunnelmen burned our villages. We forgave them. They returned five years later with different tattoos and burned our villages a second time. We are done forgiving. If ever a soul opens that door, know that it is evil, and its life shall not persist. But persist, we did. Throughout this video, we explored all four endings of Dust and made a character who could not only survive in the Ruined Lands, but thrive. If you made it to this point in the video, chances are you enjoyed my content, so if you'd like to see more, consider checking out my Patreon. There you can have early access to my videos and a unique role on the channel's Discord server. With all that out of the way, I've been Al, but do me a favor, will ya? Have a good one.